Welcome back to the Nicky Gris Motorsports channel. I recently made a trip to M Sport with the Motorsport UK Academy co-drivers to do some coaching. And I thought I'd take the opportunity to meet up with Malcolm Wilson at the car that delivered the very first win for the Focus WRC. It was 25 years ago on Safari Rally back in 1999. So you remember this then, Nick? I really do, I really do. Well, I mean, it's a, it's a special car for you in so many different ways, isn't it? Yeah, well, it was, uh, it was only the third event with, uh, with the Ford Focus. Yeah. Um, and to go and win Safari Rally, which at that point in time, uh, which it still is again now today, it was the yeah. most difficult, hardest rally to win in the World Championship. It was. And then uh, for you and Colin to do it in the way that you did it, I mean, for all Colin's flamboyant style and fastest times, I think it's probably the only rally that, um, that he won, and he actually never even set the fastest time. But as, he, as you know, he was, um, as I say, he had this incredible spectacular style, mm. but he also had an incredible understanding and what you need, mechanical sympathy. Mm. He didn't, if you saw a lot of his cars, he didn't imagine that. But, if you look at all the rallies that he won, it was always the difficult rallies, the Argentinas, the Cyprus, the Acropolises, uh, and Safari. I mean, you know, won, won Safari twice, in, uh, again, in, he followed this up in 2002 as well. That's right, yeah. Well, it was the introduction of a pace note system I gave to him. Like, uh, when I look at the, mo the World Championship today, it's about one thing and one thing only, flat oh, out, yeah. which was <clears throat> Colin McRae. But having a pace note system to gauge how slow you needed to go, yeah. and that, completely changed everything for Colin. The toughest rallies became his best. Yeah. No, it was, I mean, it's, well, we touched on it there, it was the hard rallies. And I always remember on the penultimate day, Carlos uh, Sainz saying to Uwe Anderson, when is that bloody focus going to break? It's not possible to bring a new car to Safari Rally and win, but again, you know, the combination of Colin was just so smart yeah. and yeah, it was. He did, a, really did, a, did a fantastic drive. And it was unusual for Colin to have that patience <clears throat> about going slow, having people going faster and just, whoa, accepting it. Yeah. Just give it time, let people make the mistakes. Because, you know, it, it was very much in the early days of the de development of this, of the car. And uh, yeah, he just had a lot of respect for it. Yeah. But then following this event went straight to Portugal, which was a sprint rally and I think after two stages, you were nearly 30 seconds in the lead. Yeah, it was, it was. So we followed, we followed this victory up with, uh, with, with Portugal that. straight afterwards. Oh, it was a dream start. A dream start. It, it didn't carry on that <laughs> no, way. No, no. <laughs> it turned out to be the most frustrating year ever, yeah, I think. Ever. Um, but, you know, when you look at Safari then to where we are now, and I was looking at some mileages, if this year we had 1,009 kilometres of sections. Yeah. The first day was just under 350 kilometers. And in a couple of weeks, we've got Safari Rally, of which the whole rally is 355 kilometers. I was about to say, yeah. You, you did more kilometers on day one mm. than the whole rally does now. Yeah. And, and slightly different natures, maybe not, you know, and especially this year because it's back to the wet season again, so. Yeah. I mean, and that can throw up all manner of things where a normal WRC event could be thrown into complete turmoil because it's making the best of what you can. Yeah. I mean, in terms of your new your car for Africa, then, Mark, have you got a snorkel going for snorkels? Yeah, we and... are actually we've put a snorkel on the ship for obvious, for obvious reasons. So obviously, it, that's not going to be the the river crossings. But the big uh, issue that we've seen is the fesh fesh, the dust. Yeah. Um, so that's primarily why we've actually um, fit one for this year because uh, I mean the stuff is it's like talcum powder you know it doesn't matter how good your air filters are yeah it, it seems to just I think we've seen previous the last few years where people have suffered with engine failure just by uh, ingesting too much of the of the fresh fresh and bull bars are a thing of the past thing of the past yeah we yeah uh, well it's more on private roads now than than mm. what it than what it was it whereas it was the open roads when uh, when you were doing it so they're all really in effect now private roads i mean your drivers are they prepared for what africans th can throw at them do you think i think so um okay it's, it's 
probably new for Gregoire, but Adrian's um, done it before, and he's he's got a very good understanding. He's got a clear path that he wants to follow in his head. So oh, good. And he's had, as you see, he's had a great start to the year. Fifth in Monty, got his first podium in Sweden. So, um, and he understands. He's he, he knows what he wants from the car and the team. So yeah. it'll be interesting to see. Yeah, it will certainly certainly will. So full of hope. Full of hope. Yeah. No, as I say, he had a great podium in Sweden. Um, so. Can you plan for the worst and hope for the best in the World Championship nowadays? Do you think? <sighs> You've just got to take every round as it comes in the end. Okay, we're not probably where we would like to be in terms of you know the the, uh, the driver lineup, but on the other hand, we've it's great to see. I love working with these young guys, seeing them develop, and it's great to see Adrian getting his first podium, and um, you know even some of the speed that Greg has shown already as well. So let's see. And we're off up to Greystoke now, and they're testing up in Greystoke, aren't you, for Safari? Yeah, how would he fancy sitting in the Puma? Really? Yeah, I think he should. That would be brilliant. I think he should give it a go. All right, I'll give that a try. You will feel very, very secure. I mean, the, the safety side of the car living is, in fairness, FI have done a fantastic job on the technical side of the safety structure. Um, yeah, it's, I, I'd be interested in your comments. I know, certainly will, certainly will. And can I have a little chat with Gregoire about a possible approach for him? Yeah. No, please. please I think do. that McRae system yeah, could yeah. work really no, well for please him. Please do, because uh, you're right. I mean, it's, we all know it's, it's the rough sections where you can win a laser rally. Yeah. And if you attack too hard, it's inevitable you're going to break something on yeah. the car. Yeah. Brilliant. I'm looking forward to that, Mark. Yeah. Thank you very much. Is it the same feeling putting your race suit on and stuff? Well. It's something a little different. I do put a race suit on when I go to use my car and I actually turn into a driver then. Really awkward, you know, expecting everything done just right with having full service and coffee when you request it. But actually to jump in the seat now with Gregoire in this car, I think, I think the one thing it's, it's gonna be quite exciting to actually experience the speed of the new car and the one thing it's going to be a big big difference is the traction I'm sure it's going to be quite impressive yeah in comparison but you know the old days with Colin it was very flamboyant and sideways everywhere I'm sure this car is very much like this Where from? Ford by Sparkle that originates from Boreham oh, Boreham yeah yeah so that is probably 35 years old, that bag. I had a special paint job for this to celebrate. So in my career, so I've got a map of the world and on oh, here, there's little stars to show you which of my victories. And then on the back, between these years with Toyota, four wins, those countries, Subaru, those countries. That's the one we want to and, see. And then Ford. You know, the thing is, the sport has changed a lot. I know that. It's not like it was back in our day. But back in our day, we had the best of the machinery that was available. But I think it's going to be really interesting. And thanks a lot, Malcolm, for letting me have the opportunity to actually have a ride in a current spec car, just to see how technology has made such a big difference in this sport. And um, yeah, I'm sure the experience is going to be really enjoyable. Yeah, it's like a, an honor, but it's a bit, a bit strange because he's so famous for giving pace notes and, uh, and I don't think he's planning to do, uh, to do so now. So it will be a bit like just him sitting next to me and watching. So it will feel a bit strange.
so different. Yeah, it generates so much lateral grip. Yeah. No. You can just go yeah, flat. It's a good experience. I can see why the cars are so fast. Yeah. You have the feeling there is no limit. Like you can push, 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 always push more. And then you have the feeling the, the grip is like limitless. And the moment it's when when it goes wrong, then everything happens quickly. Like you you have like a tunnel vision or something yes, or, yeah. or the elements coming so fast but when you are driving it's almost like yeah, I don't know. I was expecting it to be impressive, but I didn't think it would be quite as impressive as it was to be honest. Um the the grip levels in the car is on acceleration, on braking, is incredible. They must gain so much time over the old school cars that way. But the downforce that they get on the high speed corners, and there was one particular one that I spoke to Gregoire about then, it was, I was expecting him to brake or maybe just snatch a gear, but no, just kept it planted flat out round this left hand corner and in an old focus you would have flown off the stage to the right i mean it just it was really impressive but it's getting quite rutted out there now um with a couple of days testing as well but you know it just soaks up all the bumps and the ruts and it was super super impressive and you know it's it's fairly neutral the car so that was surprising as well always trying to turn on the handbrake get it straight and go and and you, you can see why the the current drivers sort of can get so much stay, uh, fast stage times out of these things because they're just just incredible wow that puma rally one car was something special i can promise you so much power incredible vehicles in this day and age of rallying um i'd just like to have some feedback from you guys if you could let us know if you like our stuff, if you'd like us to do some different stuff, we'd just be interested to see which way we go with our videos. And of course, don't forget to uh, subscribe to our channel and, and give us some likes as well. That would really help us. But we've got Safari Rally right around the corner and I've brought in our winning trophy. This thing is really heavy. 30 kilos of solid bronze. Um, that is some prize and... It's only right to have something so good after winning such a tough rally. But of course, Safari this year is going to be something different, shorter event, much more sprint biased. It'll be interesting to see exactly what happens amongst all of the teams, if the weather's going to have an effect or not. But I'm sure it's going to be a great event, as Safari always is.